Another form of feedback bias is emitter feedback bias. This circuit looks very similar, except that the base resistor, instead of going to the collector, goes directly to the supply voltage. Now, you'll notice that there is no connection between the emitter and the base, so you wonder how is this called emitter feedback bias. It's called that because any change in current in the emitter is going to cause a change of voltage at the emitter. And because the voltage at the emitter and base is fixed, that means that there will be a change of voltage at the base as well. This is actually a form of feedback. So to analyze this circuit again, we're going to look at that path through the base. And we're going to write Kirchhoff's voltage law. Again, Kirchhoff's voltage law simply says that the total voltage across the circuit, VCC, is equal to the sum of the individual voltage drops. So we can say that VCC is equal to IB RB plus VBE plus IE RE. Now again we want to simplify this expression and we want to get rid of the IE term. So we remember that uh, IE is equal to IB plus IC. And we also know that IC is equal to beta IB. And therefore, combine, we can combine these two expressions to say that IE is equal to IB plus beta IB, or as it's more commonly written, as beta plus 1 times IB just pulling out the IB from both those terms. So now we can make a substitution of IE, this term right here, into this equation right here. So we'll just do that. VCC is equal to IB RB plus VBE plus, now make the substitution for IE, which is this, beta plus 1 times I, B, times R, E. And then, of course, we want to gather all the terms of I, B on one side and everything else on the other. So we can rearrange this expression so that I, B, R, B, plus beta plus 1, I, B, R, E, is equal to V, C, C, minus V, B, E. Now we can pull the IB term out of here. So we have IB times RB plus beta plus 1 times RE equal to VCC minus VBE. And now, of course, we can pull the IB out of this, divide both sides by this expression. And we see therefore IB is equal to VCC minus V. B, E, divided by all of this, R, B, plus data, plus 1, times R, E. So this is one of the defining equations of emitter feedback bias. Now we also know what I, C is, and I, C is simply equal to beta, I, B. So there's the second the defining equation. And now what we'd like to know is we'd like to know what is the voltage from collector to emitter. Now uh, here we're going to make a little, take a little shortcut. From this expression over here, um, yes, I, B, I, E is equal to I, B plus I, C. I, B is much, much less than I, C. And so it would simplify things enormously if we could see that this is effectively zero and the current here is essentially the same as the current here. So we're going to actually do that. We're just going to make an assumption, assume that IB is much, much less than IC. Or another way of putting this, 
is saying that IC is approximately equal to IE. Now this will make a small error, but not a, a large one, not a significant one in our calculation of voltage collector to emitter. So again, how do we find this voltage? Well, that voltage will simply be this voltage, the supply voltage, minus the drop across this resistor, minus the drop across this resistor. So we can again, by pretty well by inspection, say therefore VCE is equal to VCC minus IC times RC plus RE. And there's the voltage across the transistor. This bias circuit, emitter feedback bias, is much more common than the collector bias feedback because it allows for the injection of a larger AC signal. And the reason for that is because we can inject by means of a capacitor here an AC signal which will vary the base up and down, which will vary the emitter up and down, and therefore provide some sort of amplification. The amplification will be roughly equal to RC divided by RE. But in the previous circuit, collector feedback bias, this voltage is fixed to zero. So we cannot vary this very much without severely affecting the operation of the transistor.